Brittany Lung, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Space Spotlight. Today, we're headed up to Snohomish, Washington, where we find 16-year-old NASCAR wheel and All-American Series driver, Bryce Bazanson. Bryce, how are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm, I'm doing great. It's a little cold up here, but uh, I'm just glad to be on the show. Yeah, us Floridians are a little jealous of that cold weather that you're already getting. Hey, Bryce, can we start by having you give us a little background on your racing career? Well, I started off in quarter midgets back in uh, 2011. I did that for four years. I was really successful. I uh, traveled around to Vegas, and I even did a couple races in Canada. And uh, we just had a lot of fun in that, but we thought it was time for something bigger. And actually, my final race of my uh, quarter midget uh, career is uh, when I joined Race Face. And then for, it was my fifth year of racing then, and I got in a micro sprint and a legend, and uh, I did about 25 micro sprint races and uh, five or six legend races. And then, and now I'm a super late model driver, which I never thought I would be. So what were your thoughts about taking such a big step moving from limited legend car and micro sprints experience to running a super late model in the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series? Well, I never even imagined it. I thought I was just going to be a dirt driver for a few years and maybe by some chance get on some super late model team. But it's I just never imagined it. But it's been, uh, you know, it's been a little rough sometimes. It's kind of in the transition of getting off dirt because I didn't really do too many legend races, but you know, we've, we worked through it. We got through this year and we had a lot of success. Now, not only did you take a big step, but you're racing for one of the top teams in the country in Jefferson racing. What has that been like? Oh, well, it's been great. I'm so honored to be on that team because they're, they always give me a great car and they, they're they always just really good at teaching me things and explaining the car to me. And it's, I'm just so happy to be on that team. You know, there's, they're, they're the best in the Northwest and you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be growing with them. I understand that you've built a close friendship with Jeff Jefferson throughout the year. Can you give us some insight into that relationship? Yeah, we just uh, really quick from the beginning, it's just really fun to be around him. He's obviously a former uh, k and driver, so he really relates to everything that I do to, to racing. And uh, we, all, we always go get steak together. <laughs> we, we both love steak, and uh, it's just uh, really, really fun to be around him. That's great. A little birdie told me that you have a technique when you get inside the race car, but on one particular night, that didn't work out so well for Jeff. What <laughs> happened? Yeah, so um, I usually, when I get my race car, I swing my right leg around, kind of just like that to get my car. And uh, one time, uh, Jeff kind of walked up to the door, and I didn't really notice him. And uh, I was doing that, and I just, you know, I was kind of already full swinging, and I just hit him right between the legs where uh, <laughs> no one, no man would like to get hit. So uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> it's just a... Uh, I'll, I'll never forget about that. Now, did he make you tame that move down, or does he just avoid you when you're getting into the race car now? Now when I get into it, I just make sure he's at least a good five feet away. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. How much did it help you being in the shop for four weeks with the team? Oh, it helped, it helped me a lot. It really taught me a lot about the car where, you know, I, when I really just go to the track, I don't know too much about the car because it's not. I don't actually own the car or how I did with my past cars, but it's really good to go there because you get to learn about the car. And then when you learn about the car, it can actually help you to set it up better because, you know, when you just tell them it's loose or tight, it's better to just say, you know, take some air pressure out of the tires because it's more what you want. And if you know what that actually does, it makes it a lot easier to set your car up. So it helped a lot. So it helps you to be more specific and communicate with your team a little more clearly. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. You also had the chance to work with IndyCar driver Robbie Unser on the simulator. Has that helped you make the transition into a full bodied race car? Yes, definitely. It's he, it's helped me a lot, and actually, I just had a session session with him like uh, 
about two weeks or no not not even two weeks one week ago i had a session with him and even then going into the race he just uh, really helped me with my braking patterns and tire conservation which is the biggest thing for me is tire conservation that's one thing that i struggled with going into a super late model racing because you know before i was a dirt driver and you didn't really have to worry about that but going into this rob yance has really helped me with you know just letting the car roll through the corners and it's just been a really big help. Let's talk about your season at Evergreen Speedway this year. What is your most memorable race? Uh, my most memorable race is probably the second to last race I had there when I got my first top five. I actually started on the pole because of an invert. They had a six car invert, so that put me in the pole. And I, I, I beat the car on the outside and I was actually in first place for about 10, 12 laps until unfortunately the car behind me bumped me out of the way and I spun out and I had to get sent to the back. But I fought through the field again and I just had a great car and it and I got back up to fifth place and I finished fifth place and it was just a really, really fun and great race. Now switching gears, was there a race that you'd like to forget about? Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, and the summer showdown is probably probably the top um i was just pushing the car a little too hard i was only i was only 10 laps in and i really shouldn't have been pushing it that hard and uh i just drove over too hard off the corner got in the wall a little bit and uh, ruptured a tire and there was a lot of damage to the car and i just wish i wouldn't have done that you know you have a race coming up next weekend at Yakima Speedway for the Fall Classic, and your team owner, Jeff Jefferson, has quite the history at the track. Has he been able to share any of his secrets? <laughs> yes, actually, which I probably shouldn't share uh, on here. Got to keep them to ourselves. But, uh, yeah, he, he grew up around that track, so he knows every single corner. And, you know, he basically just know he has the whole track memorized, uh, so we're going to have a big advantage going into that race, which uh, really excites me. Absolutely. Well, good luck in that race. Bryce, what, what, yeah, Bryce, what do you do when you're not racing? Uh, what do I do when I'm not racing? I actually, my basketball season, I play for uh, my school. Uh, I play basketball there. Uh, we actually start in about a month or a month and a half. So I'm really looking forward to that. I, uh, I just, I love basketball, always keeps me in shape. And uh, also golf is a really big thing that I do. It's just been in my family and uh, I also play that for my school and, and just, you know, with my family just for fun sometimes. But uh, I really took that naturally and uh, I, I actually went to state last year for it and uh, it's just always gonna be a part of me. Earlier in the year, you did an adoption with Friends of Jacqueline. What has that meant to you? It's meant a lot to me, especially because I, I really made a great bond with Holly, who I actually adopted through Friends of Jacqueline. And uh, I actually, I went to Red Robin with them last week and we went to uh, the Children's Hospital and just handed out toys to, to the Cancer Center. And it's just a really great experience that I think everyone should be able to do. It's just, so great seeing these kids uh, overcome cancer and it's really just heartwarming. Bryce, we're about out of time, but did you want to give a shout out to your sponsors? I would, I could not do this without Town & Country Tractor. Obviously they've been really great to me for the whole year and uh, CrowdStrike Racing, my newest sponsor, uh, they're, they're awesome. They'll, they'll always support me at, down at uh, Yakima Speedway. And uh, again, my partnership with the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, obviously not a sponsor, but I do wear their logo on my car and it's just, I'm, I'm glad to be doing that. Thank you so much for joining us, Bryce. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. There you have it. What an amazing story from one of the young rising stars in motorsports. To learn more about Bryce, check him out at BryceBizancinRacing.com. Follow him on social media. Don't forget, if you want to catch up on any of the Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching.